Hi everyone, and welcome to Bob's Woodstuff. For episode 3 of my joinery class series, I'll be doing a mitered half lap joint. This joint is mitered on the front, but has glue surface like a half lap joint, so it's much stronger than a miter on its own. I'll show you how to cut it by hand. If there's another joint you'd like to see, put it in the comments. I started by cutting a couple of pieces of alder and squaring it off. It's very important that your stock is square in all directions and that the end cuts are square. I ensured that using a crosscut sled on my table saw and I hand planed the edge and the face to make sure that they were square and that they're the same size. First, I'll mark where this joint is going to go by scribing a line across grain on this piece. And I want that line to be the exact width of the other piece. So I'll just place this on the edge of this piece here and I'll make a little notch on the end here. Then I'll use my combination square to scribe this line across. Next, I'll make a line that goes at 45 degrees because I need to cut off this end at 45 degrees. And I'll use my combination square for that as well. I also want to mark this on the other side because when I'm sawing, I need to be able to see that. To get a really straight line, I'll use the biggest chisel I have, which is two inches. If you don't have a two inch chisel, you can use one and a half inches just as well. Then I'll flip it over on the other side and make a knife wall on the other diagonal. Now I can cut this diagonal with a handsaw. I'll keep this cut on the waist side of my line and then pare it down to the line with the chisel later. I'm keeping my cut only on the sides that I can see, which are this side and this side. So this is looking really good so far. I need to pare it down to that line with a chisel. This could also be done with a block plane. Now that I've cut it at that 45 degree miter angle, I need to remove half of the material on this spot here. So I'll use my marking gauge to strike a line around it and measure half of the thickness. This piece is 5 8 thick, so I'm going to measure 5 16 and set my marking gauge to that. And then I'll make all my marks referencing the front face of this. This will be important when using the other piece because if you reference the same face on both pieces, they'll line up correctly. And then I'll also strike this line around to match up with my other line. Make sure to leave your marking gauge locked at this exact setting and don't move it at all. You'll need it for later. Now on my second piece, what I'm going to do is scribe the diagonal line at the end. Now I can use the marking gauge on this piece, referencing from the face side again, and marking my waist. And I'll strike this line cross grain to meet up with my other line.
Now I'll create a knife wall on this section because I need to saw down there. I'll use my chisel again with the flat side facing my keep side and the waist side against my bevel. So now I need to remove half of each of these pieces. I'll do a rip cut with my Ryobi saw and I'll make sure to keep it on the waist side of this so I can pare it down with my chisel later to the line. I'll start with the cross cut side and when I establish a kerf, I'll switch to the rip side. Now that I've made that rip cut, I can do a cross cut right here to remove the piece. I'll use my mini dozuki saw and place it in the knife wall. It's looking pretty good. There's some cleanup still to do with a chisel, so I'll do that right now. I'll start by chiseling straight down to make sure I've severed these fibers. Okay, that's a really nice looking joint right there. I'll go ahead and cut the other one and see how they fit. So now with this piece, I need to remove this top half. So what I'll do is start by making a knife wall and then cross cut down here. Now that I have this shoulder cross cut, I can rip cut to remove this piece. I'll start with the cross cut side and then switch to the rip side, staying on the waist side of my line. I've got that piece removed, but I'm very far from my line right here, so I'll need to chisel it down. Be careful about the grain direction here, because if your grain runs out down, you might go past your line.
Right now I'm going across the grain because it seems to be tearing out when I go that way. I can see right here I'm just about to the line, so I'll just do a little bit more, but I really want to respect that first line that I've made. That's what determines the fit of my joint. I still need to work it down on this side to get it to that line. Just clean up the inside corner here. And then I'll use my ruler just to see if there's any high spots. If it teeters at all, I'll know that there's a high spot. So, looks like it's a little bit high right there. A little bit right there. Possibly there. So I'll try to remove just those spots. Okay, let's try the fit of the joint. It goes together well. The miter is very nice. There is a little bit of teetering on this part, and that is because I haven't removed all the material right here. So I'll go back and I'll retouch that part. Okay, let's try that fit again. Nice shoulder on the back here. Nice miter on the front. When assembling this, I would put glue on both faces and then clamp it down like this to get that really good face-on-face -face glue surface. And uh, it's a very strong alternative to a regular miter joint because of that glue surface. So that joint comes together really nicely. If you're making a frame, I highly recommend trying the half lap miter joint instead of a regular miter joint because it's much stronger. I hope you enjoyed watching and make sure to download the plans in the description if you want to follow along and incorporate this joint into your own projects. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe. Bye.